Hi, my name is Rob Stewart. I am the current executive director of New Horizons, and I am joined with the amazing and the, the venerable and the really wise Rita Newsley and Mary Steele, who are former executive directors and, and pillars of New Horizons and have built and put so much love and time into this place that it's hard to even capture any of that and all of it. And so you may be aware that we are in the middle or launching a, a campaign that we are calling We Are New Horizons. And it really is just an intentional opportunity for us to celebrate that New Horizons is a lot more than me and the staff now in this current iteration, but it's really a legacy of, of love and compassion that is driven by a group of people that foundationally believe that we fundamentally could just do better for young people that are experiencing homelessness here in King County and in Seattle. And we may just be a little sentimental because there's been so many challenges and changes and difficulties through this COVID-19 era, but we really have felt overwhelmingly like we just want to reflect and honor and uh, show some respect and connect to the past that has got us here and the legacy that has got us here, because it has also been that legacy and that community that was built even before me that has really helped to sustain us and make us really thrive through this pretty difficult, challenging time. And so the format for today, asking some questions, it's gonna be a little bit of uh, travel down memory lane, and it's also gonna be a little bit of fun. So Rita and Mary, I am so, so grateful that you are here. I know that you are way busier than people would probably even know. And so for you to take time to do this means a ton to us. So we will start out with just a few questions. The first question I have is for you, Rita. When you think of the New Horizons community, what three words come to mind? Well, the first one's a phrase, um, love and action. Uh, the, when I first came to New Horizons, one of the youths said to me um, that New Horizons was love with skin on it. And... Uh, Ontologically, that's who God is. By definition, is love. So the fact that this young man was able to just go here, this is what you are. So that's a phrase, but it's it's significant. The other one is perseverance, because um, the youth persevere to live in really difficult, difficult situations, and the staff persevered to be in relationship, day in, day out, middle of the night crazy weather, didn't matter. There was perseverance to be in relationship, which speaks to the longevity of New Horizons and the people who have worked and volunteered there. And then the third word is grace, that there is just grace for the kids, for the young people, these amazing young people that we get to, we have the opportunity to serve and learn from and grace for one another as we kind of stumble and fumble our way towards a deep relationships with youth. It's really good. That, that, that's what, how you built the legacy. Those answers right there. Um, Mary, same question to you. When you think of New Horizons, what are three words that come to mind? Well, you can't say New Horizons without love. And so I would just echo what Rita has said there. But a couple other words that I would use, um, hope, you know, cool. Always hope, uh, no matter what circumstance the organization was in or the young people we were dealing with, you know, we always would have hope. And uh, and that hope was answered time and time again. And then humility, you know, um, so many things that we learn from the young people who come in the door uh, and just remembering that we don't have the answers that that it's their lives. It's not our lives that they're living. And so they're they're the experts on their lives. Um, so those uh, those are the two that I would add. Yeah, and I, I see so much of that still, all of that when I when I think of New Horizons for myself and what I observed coming in was this this overwhelming sense of hope for our young people, this undying sense of wanting to advocate and be alongside of them and to believe uh, with them and at times for them. It's just, it's an amazing thing that is really embedded in 
just this community. And so I appreciate both of you for helping to plant that for sure. All right, Mary, we'll start with you. When you think of New Horizons, what memory sticks the strongest for you in your mind? You know, it really has to be the day we opened the nest. Um, New Horizons had tried to do housing before and it had been uh, really hard. Um, it was, this is the first time we'd actually done it in the building that uh, New Horizons owns and was in. And we had a celebration and all the young people who are moving in came and just talked about what it meant to them to be able to not just have a shelter, a place to be, but to have it be at New Horizons. And the fact that it was so significant to them that they could be uh, where they felt the best, where they felt like they were cared for. And, you know, then just seeing the significant difference that it made in so many lives over the years that I was able to to be there with my office right right outside the door and see everything that was happening. So that was that really sticks in my brain <laughs> and yeah. my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Rita, the same question to you. When you think of New Horizons, what is the memory that sticks strongest in your mind? Well, actually, it's one of my first memories. Um, I, I first night working um, at New Horizons. So uh, I've been gone 11 years and I was there for 22. So we're talking 33 years ago. We were on Second Avenue where Ben Royal Hall is now. And it was a condemned building. And uh, when it rained outside, it rained inside. We had, they, had buckets <laughs> hanging, they had buckets hanging from the, the ceilings, right? And there was no heat in the building. And uh, we served soup at night. And this was my first night. I was going to work night shift, right? And I show up and there are like, 50 kids lined up, young people lined up, waiting to get into this storefront building. And um, being the new director, I started chatting with them. They didn't know who I was. So why are you here? Over and over, the kids said, oh, we're here. We're going to get warm. We're going to get warm. Well, I knew that when I walked into that building, it was going to be freezing cold because there was no heat. <laughs> there was going to be soup. But the reality was when they walked in, they were beloved. And it just poured off the volunteers tears both the people serving the soup and the staff and the reality is the room was warm but it wasn't warm with the heat from a heater it was warm with the depth of deep caring that was there and i and that carried as long as i've known new horizons all those years that has been true still today that kids are the young people that we just love and are committed to they're coming in to get warm and as they do they they give us warmth. they bless us because it's always a two-way street always in this kind of work we're, we're as equally blessed yeah i again both of those things that it's interesting we're in the process of redesigning the nest right now mm -hmm. um, because of covid 19 and we have this opportunity to to really redo the entire thing, which is such a cool chance for us to be able to do that because it is all of those things, Mary. It is a, it is a place for people to come and to be safe and to be warm and to be recognized and to have a place that is close to those that they are in relationship with. It's 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 an amazing thing, and I too, Rita, would feel the same thing in many ways where over and over again I have conversations with young people that that talk about a difference that talk about sort of an intangible component or a way that they are treated here that is honoring that that sees them that understands their story and those things are, are really in the fabric they're just in the fabric of who we are and they drive everything from how we do strategic planning and the things that we talk about and uh, all of those things are so deep here and again so, so much of our community has actually made that happen it is it is not me i walked into this and it is just a part of what new horizons has been and will continue to be well i got a fun question now this is a fun question for you mary we'll start with you again what is the most interesting donation that you have ever gotten. 
Well, the one that knocked my socks off was when I opened the mail and there was an unexpected $300,000 check. <laughs> that, that was a good one. <laughs> That's a really good one. I don't get many of those. No, no. It was the only one I ever got. But, uh, <laughs> you know, somebody dropped off some golf clubs one time. It's like, I'm not sure what they were thinking. It's like, okay, well, I'm sure someone will use them. None of the youth wanted them. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not sure we have them anymore. But yeah, no, we, uh, I think probably, we, probably we re-donated those. Yeah. <laughs> Rita, what about you? What's the most interesting donation that you ever had during your time here? Well, you know, there's so many, but so it was hard for me to raise it up to top. I might have to tell you two, but um, one was uh, red leather couches. When we moved into when we moved into the building there on Third, we needed furniture, and we'd always look. You know, people had given us their secondhand stuff, and there was this young man. His name was Hunter Simpson, and uh, he was a senior in high school and he had a brain tumor and he had been serving kids in his community that were homeless lunch and stuff, wanted to come to New Horizons, had a tour. And he, he had the opportunity through make a wish foundation to do something wonderful. And he said to them, I am so loved in my life and we have resources. What I'd like to do is I'd like to give this, the youth that live on the streets that go to New Horizons, red leather couches in their drop-in center. And he told them, and they said, well, we don't do that. It's for you. And he said, well, it would be for me. I want these kids to have red leather couches. Leather, because it's it. nothing can get into it, and it doesn't retain odor and no lice. And he, so he was practical. Red, because it's bright and welcoming, brand new. And uh, he talked them into it. And I was there the day the three red leather couches showed up at our drop-in center. And I watched these youth lay on the couch. One of the boys said, I don't think I've ever had a virgin couch before. <laughs> <laughs> they were just so ecstatic, right? And uh, I, I remember a businessman came in afterwards and said, you have these red leather couches. I, if I was a street kid, then you know I wouldn't want to stay on the streets. And I started laughing. They said, you can come sleep on our red leather couches anytime, spend the night, and then tell me who you stay on the streets. Guy gave us a large donation after that. So that was that was, and and um, this young man died when he was uh, when he was eighteen, and his school in Bellevue still does a soup for Simpson Day, where the kids all come and they eat soup and give their donation for lunch. And I think that school has given New Horizons well over fifty thousand dollars in the years since then. So, uh, well over a hundred thousand. Over a hundred. See, look yeah. at that. Yeah, so they, they still do it, and even this year during yeah. COVID, they uh, they the students were amazing. They they developed this online platform, and they did it, and they raised fifteen thousand uh, dollars that day for us. It was really really cool. It still remains an amazing story. We we talk about it, um, and it, it's just amazing legacy of a young person who. Yeah. who just through love and just a generous act has really had a lasting impact on the young people that we work with. I would say my most interesting one um, actually strangely comes from a relative of the Simpson family, and it is a fish tank. I have a huge, I don't know, probably 200 gallon fish tank now in the lobby upstairs, and we have it. and. It is cleaned regularly and they support uh, the cleaners coming out and it's kind of an amazing peaceful piece in the middle of <laughs> the upstairs uh, milieu that we have. So, you know, there, well, that, just, uh, yep, no, keep going. There's just one other one. That yes, please. When New Horizons was ready to make this, we'd been at the building for a while. We knew we needed to do a, a job mentoring program. And there was tons of programs in Chicago that were doing that. And I got, I prayed about it and thought I was hearing God clearly that I, I was supposed to take the staff and a couple of board members and some volunteers to Chicago and go look at all these programs and come back. And we were supposed to discern wh what's next, which is what started the job mentoring programs and a lot of those types of programs that ended up with the coffee shop and those things coming from that. And I went to the board and I said, if we get frequent flyer miles and we, and we stay at a hostel and et cetera, et cetera. We could take the whole staff 
and we could take a couple board members and we could do this and we only need $20,000. And the board smiled at me very sweetly and said, well, that's not in our budget. So if you, if someone gives you a gift for 20,000, you can do whatever with, you can go. Then the next day in the mail, we got a gift for $40,000, a check, $40,000. And the person wrote 20,000 for operations and 20,000 for something that God's told the executive director she's supposed to do. Hmm. <laughs> How's that for just wild? So we went and then all the programs we came back and dreamed and discerned together and started the job mentoring programs and becoming a much more diverse organization. That, that was the impetus that drew all that. Wow. Both of you have really interesting stories of big checks just landing on you. That, that doesn't happen to me very much. <laughs> so if someone's watching this and they want to change that for me, I would be totally fine. <laughs> I would be really for angel donors. A million dollars and above. <laughs> yes, please. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, this is a reminder to people who maybe are uh, just now tuning in. Uh, my name is Rob Stewart. I'm the executive director at New Horizons, and we are with Rita Newsley and Mary Steele, who are former executive directors and who have really built so much of what New Horizons is today. And this is a celebration, a connection point for us to remember the past and how it continues to shape us today and how that has also been shaped by our community the community of people that come alongside of our young people that come alongside of our staff and really support the work that we do so the next question i have is actually i'm going to start with you this time rita uh, if you could think about this work and your time here and you could have gotten, let's say, a, a grant. It's sort of an endless well of money that allows you to sustain the work that you were doing uh, and you never have to fundraise ever again. Would you choose to do this work without the New Horizons community? You know, it's, it's never easy to, to fundraise, but what I saw over and over and over was it was the community. Um, I name it the beloved community by name. Thomas Kelly, a Quaker who wrote in the 40s, called it the blessed community, but it's the community that hears the God of the universe voice and says, we want to be part of this community and we want transformation to happen. And I really believe that that only happens in community. So I would, I would do the, I would do the work and I would have the relationships because it's through relationships. We had volunteers that stayed 15, 20 years. We had paid staff who were there even longer than that. It, and it's still going on today. I, I got a call last week from a young man who's now 45, who I knew when he was 15, and just wanted to check in. The relationships continue, and and the I have the supporters that were there then, I still know today, and they love New Horizons, and they love the youth, and they're committed to transforming our world. And so I, I just can't imagine not doing it with community and in community. And it's worth, I wouldn't trade the relational piece because that's truly how transformation, transformation doesn't happen in the absence of relationships. It just doesn't. And that's what we're inviting, not only the youth on the streets, but the, the staff and the volunteers. We are wanting all to be transformed into who we were created to be. And that process happens in relationships. And the, the youth have as much to teach us as we have to teach them. And Ron Ruthruff, who was there for um, 25 years, wrote a book on the lessons that we learned from the street youth. And, and it's powerful because it's this is what it's about. It's about a relational community that transforms our world. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mary, uh, same question to you. If if you could wake up one day and have a never ending grant that would fund everything that you do, would you do it without the New Horizons community? Well, I think that a lot of the work is community. Yeah. So um, there's, uh, you know, there are pieces that you, of course, would do. I mean, you would you would have a shelter where people can come and sleep and be safe, you know, but that's not the real work, right? Uh, I think about the food groups and the meaning of home-cooked meals 
for young people and just the difference it makes. I'm now the interim executive director at Compass Housing and we have we have four shelters and you know 380 beds and so we can't do the the kind the kind of volunteer home cooked meal, you know, we contract with somebody to bring meals in. It is so different. And so uh, it just doesn't convey that caring and respect that New Horizons has been able to do for so many years with young people. And so, of course, would I would I provide some of these services? Yes. But again, as Rita was talking about transformation, I just wouldn't expect to see that, you know, because that happens in the context of being surrounded by community. Yeah, you're both touching on something that is said a lot um, and, and actually not not just at New Horizons, but within the the youth homelessness space is so much of what we're trying to solve is fractured relationship. Young people have fractured relationships with uh, their their family, fractured relationship with systems, fractured relationships with community, and, and in many ways the fabric and the framework that, that supported them, that, that should have really helped develop a consistent foundation wasn't there. And so a lot of what we're solving for, actually it just can't be solved with money. It really can't be. Now you can create platforms with money, you can create space with money, but you can't actually create the, the, the real hard work of knowing and learning the story of and just advocating for a young person. You just can't do it outside of relationships. I, I, I agree that that is one of the things that makes us extremely, extremely unique here. Um, Reed, I got another question for you. Um, one of the things I'm going to give you a primer is one of the things that has been really interesting about um, this season of COVID, doing this work, doing human services, is you you sort of age in dog years as an organization. It's like everything just grows and transforms exponentially faster, and decisions that you would have held off on and thought about and planned about for a year, two years, three years. And Mary, you know this, like you, you've moved shelters in like weeks. So I think I understand. Stood them up happens. and stood down. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is, you are forced to take risk. And I think one of the things that we are learning is that risk that is done well with a team is built in trust. It's like, if you trust each other, if you can create a framework where there is a deep sense of trust, then, then risk feels okay. And so one of the things I was wanting to ask is, what is one risk that you took that just really played out well and why? Well, there were lots and lots of risks, <laughs> but I, um, the, the building there on Third Avenue um, was a huge risk. We, um, we had been in a, a rental for 10 years and that that in itself we've been the condemned building we were in we got kicked out of and we were in a rental space downtown for a year trying to figure out what to do and we found a house and the owner would give it us a decreased rent if we could renovate it to what we needed and so i made a deal with him for decreased rent for 10 years and then i went out to raise grants first grants i'd ever written we got 100% of every grant we wrote, which people said you'd never get for a house you didn't own. And we got into that building and we were approaching year eight. And it was time to buy a place. I was sure we'd been there. And we went out and started fundraising. We fundraised on a building up on Capitol Hill for almost two years. It all fell apart. And I said, OK, God, I don't even know how I screwed up here. But, you know, we raised quite a bit of money. We still had, but we didn't know what to do. And what I heard was there was a building just before you started raising on this one. So. I called the realtor. He remembered the one on third where we are, where we are right now, where New Horizons is right now. And uh, it was um, uh, 800,000 to purchase it. And I had a, a um, contractor who was on the board and he, he and Scott Huntley, who was the architect, they figured out a plan about 400,000 to renovate. I never said in that whole campaign, a million 
I never, I was 600,000, a million four. I always said 800,000 to purchase, 600,000 to renovate, a million four. And, um, and we, we got in the building in a couple months. We started the renovation process. This, I, I acted as general contractor with the contractor who was so amazing. The staff did a ton of work, the volunteers, everything happened. And um, literally um, a year, I think it was almost 18 months after we were there, I sent an a, a initial request for proposal to the brand new Gates Foundation. They didn't even have a criteria yet. They would never do this now saying, hey, if you give us this grant, we will be totally funded. And the money that we're spending every month paying a bill for the loan on the building would go towards these job mentorship programs and stuff, right? And I remember the check, the mail came back a couple of weeks later, an envelope. It was a request to do a proposal, right? The foundation was so early. I, you know, I had everybody gather around. Thank goodness nobody had cell phones in those days. I opened it up and in it was a check for the full amount that was needed to finish funding the building. I got up on the desk and danced. <laughs> so I'm so glad there were no, <laughs> there were no pictures of that. Everybody screaming and hollering. We hadn't even had to do the proposal. That would, no, that never happens, never. And the building was fully funded. Um, I think it was right, right around year two. I'm not exact on that, but right in that time frame. And it was this huge risk and it was, and we owned it free and clear at that point in time. And, and today it's worth way more than 1.4 yeah. million. <laughs> so. it's, it's worth quite a bit more than that. Yes. That's well, and you know, Rita, maybe, maybe you uh, remember this, but my, uh, the first time my now husband came to visit me, I had already uh, agreed to put insulation into that building. And so he came along to help. <laughs> so everybody got a quick look at Bob. <laughs> so, so Mary's husband, Bob, he was, when we started doing job mentorship, Bob did a mentorship where he taught young men or women how to renovate ho houses. And we called it the Bob job. <laughs> and Bob, Bob, literally, if you were to walk into New Horizons today, a ton of that work that's been done there was done by Bob and different youth that worked with him, different staff. It's amazing work that was done. So it, it wasn't a very respectful, the Bob job, but Bob is held in high <laughs> regard at New Horizons. Mary was on the board at that time. <laughs> Bob did some work on our, our garage even when I was here. So I, I have seen Bob here myself. So it's pretty an amazing thing. Mary, you get the least, uh, the less fun version of this. Uh, yeah. When you think about risk, what is one risk that you took and it just, uh, man, it didn't pan out and, and why? Well, you know, most of those probably have to do with hiring, so I probably won't talk about that, but <laughs> people I probably shouldn't have hired, you know. Uh, but one that I think about is, you know, when we uh, did the renovation to do the nest, we had an opportunity to renew our kitchen. And I had spent hours and hours in that kitchen, you know, um, but we had a chance to get all new equipment. I was really excited about it. And I did, I talked with some of the food groups, got some input, um, but I had worked in that kitchen for years, you know, and I'd heard all the complaints and I thought I knew what everybody wanted. And so I made all the decisions about what, was gonna go in that kitchen. And uh, what I learned is what I really should have done is to let the food groups decide. <laughs> Rather than let me, because man, I heard about that just about every day for the next two or three years. <laughs> we don't like this and we wish you had done this differently. <laughs> I really like the new dishwasher, commercial dishwasher, but that's the <laughs> only thing I got credit for. <laughs> we just had to fix the dishwasher. We no, just had to fix it. Yeah. It's still there. Um, you know, Rob, one, yes. other, one other decision that I think is, was key and was that we felt like we were being asked to become a multicultural organization. We were predominantly, we were a white staff and we weren't seeing kids of color and we, we prayed a lot about it. We got um, both uh, Harvey Drake and then Ernie Cathcart became our mentor. And, and we went through undoing institutional racism and we'd written a bunch of grants for new staffing programs. And we actually advertised that we were attempting to become a, a diverse 
a diverse staff and ask people to join us in that journey. And it was rock and roll in years that the organization did become a diverse organization. And it's still to this day, a diverse and, and kids from all different backgrounds felt more comfortable being in the drop-in center. And it was probably one of the things that was the biggest risk and the most vital. And in this current climate in our country, I believe that it's what we're being invited to if, as people of faith is to open our hearts and our arms and to embrace every nation, every tribe. And that, that was one of the riskiest things we did. And it was glorious and painful. And the people of color who joined us, they deserve medals because they watched us, they, they walked us through challenging times. And um, it's, I mean, it's an ongoing journey, I know, Rob, but, but one that Mary was committed to, one that you're committed to, one that is part of what's being invited in our entire country and really the world. So that's a big one for me. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, it, it, you know, it is, it is certainly an ongoing point of growth. It, it is, it is an ongoing conversation and it, there is always more to do as an organization and there's always ways to push our own fragility, our own understandings. There's so much work to do and um, it's, it is it is important not just to the organization but certainly for our young people and and just the community in general so i appreciate that yeah. all right another fun question um this was written by our communications director what is your favorite new horizons smell Let's start with you mary well is there anything <laughs> other than bacon i mean come on yeah. <laughs> bacon is good yeah <laughs> Rita, what about you? What's your favorite New Horizon smell? Well, the first one I put down was food cooking because the, the best food in the city is served at New Horizons by the food groups. And the next one I have to say is when a kid who's just gone come out of the shower <laughs> from having gotten clothes from the drop-in center, gone in and taken a shower and walks out and gives you a huge hug and they smell like powder and freshness was a lovely smell because they'd come in and say, oh, it's so nice to be clean. And uh, much different odor than what had gone into the shower coming out of the shower, so. For sure, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. That's a really good one. I would say I, we were joking around about this, but my favorite smell now is bleach. And part of that is that I, I know it's clean. <laughs> There's so much focus on cleanliness and repeated cleanliness every right. single day, actually multiple times a day, which is really good. Something we should have always been doing, frankly. But uh, when I walk in and a space smells clean, I think, OK, all right, we did it right here. This is really good. So it's kind of a funny, funny thing. Well, uh, just to recap, uh, part of why we wanted to do this was really this this recognition that New Horizons is so far beyond me and it's so far beyond us and it it will continue to go on beyond us and in that way it's just a legacy it is it is a thing that has it's sort of self-generating in a lot of ways and it's it's just beautiful so when I think about the New Horizons legacy um, what opportunities are you most excited about for New Horizons? Let's start with you, Mary. Well, you know that building. Uh, <laughs> someday, and especially now that I'm running an organization that that has low-income housing and seeing, you know, what it means to have permanent housing to people, and you know the the idea that that building could uh, could be that in the city. Um, knowing, you know, you can go up, what, 12 stories? Well, yeah. People, I know it was at least, yeah. Yeah, and they've, they've, they've increased it. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah, it's time, a huge opportunity. Yeah. Huge opportunity. Rita, what about you? When you think of New Horizons, what, what's just like the most interesting, the greatest opportunity you think? I, I want to, I just need to piggyback with Mary long-term sustainable housing for youth 
as they exit the street life. And, and we have this piece of property. It'd be lovely to have the rest of the corner, that parking lot. It'd be lovely to have it. <laughs> I, I tried for many years. That was one of my failures. But hey, I that, had those conversations yes. too. <laughs> that, that to, but to, to, to take that and to go up. And that would be a place where people could give much time and much money. And there could be still a, a drop-in center and emergency shelter and long-term housing and job training programs. And that there's such potential there. And it's right in the core. And I I, I just partner with Mary in saying that that's a long-term vision. And, and we want, the desire is for people to be sustained and to live rich and full lives. Um, and to do that, you need a, a safe place to live long term. And Mary knows this. Uh, the conversations right now and the continuum, the the homeless continuum is just, just housing. Where, where do you get it? it? It's one thing to want people to move into housing, but where is it? How do you find it? How do you actually secure spaces that are both appropriate and sustainable and right for people? And we talk about that all the time. And we talk about here about the most vulnerable of the most vulnerable. I, I we find ourselves scratching our heads a lot, thinking, how would you ever have housing or build housing for those people that there is just no housing resource available right now? Like we're, we're there's lots of people we have nowhere to send, and it is a constant thought on our minds of how would we provide housing in a way that would be meaningful and uh, sustainable. And we've got an opportunity, certainly, in the building. Um, well, there's also there's also people who have property that's outside of the city as well. I could see a both and where there's sustainable, actual, you know, growing and um, learning things that are maybe outside of the traditional city core that for many people would be a real gift. And, and I do believe there's a both and that could happen. But it, it does take people being willing to commit and buy in and, and support, you know. That's what we're waiting for that multi million dollar check. I'm hoping yeah. when I walk out today, we'll be there. Um, <laughs> each of you gets 30 seconds or one minute. I, I wrote down one minute. I'll give you one minute of unsolicited advice to me. Uh, Rita, let's start with you. This is specifically for you. For me. Yeah, that's what I mean. So don't forget that you are absolutely the beloved son of God and that your intimacy with the God of the universe allows for you to be beloved and to have space and time and to not have to do it all and to invite your team for that so that as a team, there's space and margins trusting that there is a this bigger picture, the bigger beloved community that can come alongside. Because so many people get so busy serving God and caring for others that they forget that they're beloved and that they need space and margin. So I'm asking you to take care of your soul and your body for long-term sustainability and energy and to teach your staff that. And that's part of your transformation because for you to invite the youth to be transformed, your journey has to continue. And I'm deeply committed to that. It's what I get to do with people now. And I, I believe that that's what allowed me to be long-term at New Horizons and married. You know, it's the sustainability piece. So that's what I would invite you to. Yeah. I appreciate that. Mary, I know that you want to give me advice. <laughs> you give me a lot of, actually, Mary gives me lots of advice still. Um, the wise woman. Of unsolicited <laughs> advice. Well, you know, I'll pick a piggyback on uh, what Rita said, and and I would just say relax, you know, take some time for yourself, go outside, take a walk, you know, uh, you don't have to do it all, and you're good at what you do, don't worry about it, it'll happen. Um, I, you know, I and I had my first few years, I think I had the same sense. I was like this all the time. You know, it's if I don't work 30 hours every day, you know, it's not going to happen. Um, but it happened, you know, and it kept happening when I stepped back. Uh, and it will keep happening for you. So, yeah. 
no one's ever accused me of just relaxing a lot. Right? Like <laughs> no. that's that has never that been an, <laughs> it never been an indictment on me. Um, all right, we'll do it differently. So the advice this time is thirty seconds to the New Horizons community. We have thirty seconds to address the New Horizons community to encourage them to carry on and carry us forward over the next forty years. We'll start with you, Rita. Well, to piggyback on what we said to you is is to to give yourself permission to love and to love well and to give yourself permission to receive as well as to give and to know that your peace matters. Whether you're singing with the pilgrims or serving breakfast or out on the streets or figuring out housing or teaching job mentorship, the piece you do matters so much. And to do it with your full heart and to, to, to celebrate that it matters and to not, um, and to continue to use Mary's word of hope, perseverance, hope, grace. That's good. That's really good. Mary, you have 30 seconds to address the New Horizons community, encourage them to continue the legacy and continue to move us for the next 40 years? Well, you know, I've always been uh, uh, driven by the sense that to whom much is given, much is required, right? And most of us, any of us who've grown up in families where we really had love, where we had it, you know, at least one parent or grandparent or someone who really believed in us. Uh, we have so much more than so many of the young people that New Horizon serves. And uh, we are a community. We are people who need to watch out for other folks. And these kids deserve us. So I just encourage all of us to, to remember them and remember that uh, if we can't do it ourselves, we can at least help New Horizons do it. Yeah. I appreciate that. And I, I know that for many people who will see this, that that your words, they carry a lot. They carry a lot because they've been backed with lots of action that has been trusted and centered on the right things. And I'm deeply grateful for that. And, and I, I have a deep sense. I, I have this real sense that New Horizons is at a, at a great place where we're in a strong position. There's so many opportunities. And unfortunately, youth homelessness isn't going away anytime soon. And so there's so much work to do. And so much of the young people we see see so many new and different things than they did even 25 years ago. It's, it's such a different and shifted population. And so we're, we're iterating and we're changing and we're developing. We're asking really good questions about how do you support the highest need young people in the entire state. How do you do that? How can we come alongside and do that well and not just not just do it, but but help them find stability and hope and support both behavioral health, mental health, housing, all of that. So there's so much work to be done and I think we've got an amazing team to do it. I'm just grateful that you have built this pathway in so many ways to do this and the community has. So one Last fun question I have, and I don't know if both of you know this, but I don't know it, and it's kind of been plaguing me for the last <laughs> six weeks. We were pulling up the carpet to put down uh, flooring upstairs because it's easier to sanitize. And there was half of a mural that was revealed, and I have no idea what it is or how it got there. Does anyone know? Well, I can answer at least part of it, and I can... Uh maybe point you in a direction. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, the carpet that was there before was horrible. <laughs> it had been there for 100 years uh, <laughs> since the building was. 
And so when Mac Cuthbertson came as our facilities guy, he decided he was just going to tear it up and we would go with plywood for a while until we could do our renovation. And so he uh, got the kids who were in his facilities mentorship to start decorating it. And so that's uh, that's where it came from. Now, I can't remember exactly what it is, uh, but Mac would be able to answer that question. <laughs> it is a little obscure. I'm unclear yeah. on what it is. Yeah. There's a lot of those things that I find around here where I think, wow, I wonder how long that has been here. <laughs> and I, I wonder who did that or how I got yeah, yeah. I just realized there's a lot that's gone before me. But. Well, I. I really do just want to say thank you to both of you and it is an honor to be able to just chat and hear all of the work that you've done but also hear a lot about just your heart and what makes this place really really special and so i'm, I'm grateful for that um we are also going to continue this campaign that we are new horizons campaign it's just an opportunity for people to come alongside of us and to remember that there's a lot of work yet to be done and it's important work and it's as important as it was 42 years ago there's still young people that find themselves on the streets and they do not have a place to go and as a community we can just do better we could just do better than that and uh, we have an opportunity to do that and i'm so grateful for all the help that you provide okay well i Thank i want to say to you rob that we've been but what I saw in Mary, what I see in you, what I saw in Pete Bilesma and in the gentleman who founded New Horizons is a deep and abiding commitment to love those that have been entrusted to us, to walk with them in their transformation and through that process we transformed ourselves. And and that's what that's what you're living out and breathing and and we are New Horizons is inviting everyone to join you in that. And it's an amazing invitation. So thank you for keeping it going. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.